Hey, hey, what's up guys? I hope everyone is doing well out there. Coming at you with another lore video, and today we're going to be discussing some of the other Force Orders in the galaxy outside the Jedi and the Sith. This is a series that I want to keep going for a while. We already covered the Sorcerers of Rand, and today we're going to dive into an order of warriors that are reclusive, secretive, rare almost to a fault. They are wanderers of the hyperlanes, following only the will of the Force and protecting those who travel in space. That's right! We're about to chat about the Wardens of the Sky. So sit back, relax, and let's dig in. Ah, you bring questions of the Wardens. You have grown wise, Apprentice, to seek out alternative points of view. The Wardens of the Sky share many similarities with the Jedi, and yet, they are very different. You may never meet one in your life, but if you do, you must be prepared. There are few warriors as skilled as a Warden, few martial artists with as much training and talent. They rarely carry lightsabers, for they do not need them. The Force is their ally, and a powerful ally it is. Excerpt from Darth Matu's Holocron Discussing the history of the Wardens of the Sky is something easier to talk about than to actually do. The Wardens lack any kind of central organization, and that is one of the biggest differences between them and the Jedi Order. They have no high council, no code, no real semblance of organizational dogma. They do have masters, but this student-teacher relationship is private and is in no way beholden to some larger set of requirements the way it is within the Jedi. The Wardens, in many ways, simply exist. And while this fact has helped them to spread across the galaxy, it has also made records regarding their exact history extremely hard to come by. There is no Warden Archivist keeping the story of their order, no story beginning that is honored in mythology. The Wardens of the Sky simply are, which, as we go forward, I think you will come to find a bit fitting. What we do know about the origins of the Wardens is tied to hyperspace exploration. We know that exploration was hugely important to the galaxy prior to the Great Hyperspace War, Charting out safe hyperlanes was an extremely profitable enterprise at the time, and there was an entire subculture within the galactic community made of hyperspace explorers, those few folks with a ship and the guts to launch themselves randomly into the void along new vectors, hoping to find a path through the dangers of space whose coordinates would make them rich. All that we know about the Warden's beginnings is that an unknown, force-sensitive individual was one of these hyperspace explorers. They relied on their intuition in the force to find new hyperlanes rather than complex mathematics, and they would use this to ply said hyperlanes, helping to push the frontier of wild space further and further back. Hyperspace explorers would receive heavy condemnation in the wake of the Great Hyperspace War, they would take the blame for actually leading the Sith back to the Republic, and many laws were passed to regulate such exploration. Common people started to view hyperspace explorers with a prejudice which started to lead to violence. Now, this mysterious force-sensitive explorer started to use their abilities not only to chart new hyperlanes, but also to protect their fellow explorers. This person wandered the galaxy, fighting against injustice and protecting those who could not protect themselves. Eventually, they would meet others who could feel the Force, and they would train them to use their power to protect the Hyperlanes as well. Thus, the Wardens of the Sky were born. The nebulous, on-the-spot nature of the Wardens meant that while others were trained, they were slow to do so. There have never been a lot of Wardens, with new students chosen on the whim 
of a current warden according to whoever they happen to cross path with and find worthy. There is no push from them to collect four sensitive babies, no codified Padawan training phase. A warden simply chooses a student when the force presents them with one. This means that the wardens have always been very limited in number, and over time, as a group, they would pass into myth, whispered of in fables and local legends, but rarely seen in person. Indeed, many wardens actively play into this fog of mystery, keeping their identity and their abilities secret. Many people, helped by a warden of the sky, have no idea that they were even given any aid. This secretive nature and low population kept the wardens mostly out of imperial scrutiny during the time of the Empire, with Palpatine determining they were not enough of a threat to be direct targets during the Jedi Purge. Defining a Warden of the Sky is no easy task. Other Force Orders usually have a set dogmatic ideology and literal codified rules that all members of their order have to follow, but this is not the case for the Wardens. The Wardens of the Sky have only one rule. Keep the space lanes and those who travel in them safe. Some Wardens will run in smuggler circles, championing their cause as individuals willing to buck repressive authority. Others travel the hyperlanes hunting down pirates, dedicated to erasing them from the galaxy. There is no set Warden belief system. Instead, the individual beliefs of each individual Warden shaped to the common cause of defending travelers. Most Wardens live a solitary lifestyle, but this has more to do with their constant travel and desire to keep their true nature hidden from the general public than it does to do with anything else. Wardens can and do make friends, with many of them having an established hyperspace route that they travel, like a mailman or a beat cop. It can be difficult to find a Warden of the Sky, but the best chances to run into one would be around major spaceports, places where travelers congregate like cantinas or space stations. Wardens are like ghosts, drifting among the crowded populace of the galaxy, intervening in ways that can be hard to notice overtly. Wardens do have to undergo training by another Warden of the Sky in order to be considered a member of the Order, but the nature of this training is highly variable almost always determined by the individual master. A Warden of the Sky is considered trained to full Wardenhood when given a sign by the Force itself. Indeed, if the Wardens can be said to have any dogma at all, it is through their adherence to the will of the Force. The Wardens follow the Force in all things. Almost all of them maintain regular meditation practices in order to remain open to the currents of the energy web that binds all things. Perhaps the most recognizable aspect of the Wardens is their consummate, unparalleled skill in martial arts. It can be dangerous to fire a blaster in the enclosed environment of most starships, and this led the Wardens naturally towards developing close quarters hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques. Techniques that they further enhance through their prowess within the Force. It is not unheard of for Wardens of the Sky to punch through plasteel armor as if it were made of glass. In fact, the Wardens of the Sky are some of the greatest martial artists in the entire galaxy, receiving combat training far and away beyond most Jedi. The only other fighters in the galaxy who can be considered to be on par would be the followers of Palawa, the Shapers of Krovar, and the Zisan Shah, all of whom are also Force Orders who are able to enhance their martial arts via the Force. Wardens tend to focus on uses of the Force that can have physical repercussions, such as telekinesis, increasing their strength and speed, healing arts, and battle meditation. They have also been known to dabble in precognition, though this is less in the vein of true seers like Yoda and more highly tuned, innate, instinctive precognition of the kind that helps to give a Force user their enhanced reflexes. A Warden is a servant of the Force dedicated to the protection of travelers, explorers, and the disadvantaged, 
but they must be in tune with the living force in the first place in order to fulfill this purpose. Wardens hold to their own beliefs, their own ideologies, their own approaches both to life and their solemn duty of protection. But one thing they all do, regardless of belief or lifestyle, is open themselves directly to the Force. Wardens of the Sky also spend long periods of time in quiet meditation in order to strengthen their connection to the living Force itself. Wardens are rare, but they are often wise beyond their years, their experience tempered by a deep, personal relationship with the energy that binds all life. And that's going to bring us towards the end of our information on Wardens of the Sky, guys. I know that this is a shorter video compared to what I normally do, but the truth is that we simply do not have much information on the Wardens. Almost all of it comes from the Jedi Academy Training Manual source book from Wizards of the Coast, where they have their own section. Wardens of the Sky are very rare. The nature of their order and the way they train new wardens, keeping their numbers very low, and thus limiting our chances to encounter them on the center stage, so to speak. But they always struck me as one of the cooler Force Orders outside the Jedi and the Sith. They follow their own hearts, going where they will and where the Force takes them, following a thirst for adventure and exploration while choosing to behold themselves to the responsibility of protecting those who cannot protect themselves. They are without any doubt some of the greatest hand-to-hand -hand fighters in the Star Wars galaxy, equaled only by the other Force Orders I mentioned earlier on, or some folks like the Ichani. Wardens can blend into a crowd, preferring to go unnoticed, and to have their acts of bravery be subtle rather than in the open. They don't wield fancy laser swords, they don't have a uniform, and they never ask for credit or recognition. They simply train their bodies to the physical peak and then lean on the Force as their strongest ally. Wardens of the Sky are my own personal favorite Force Order, one that I wish got a lot more love. But alright, that's gonna do it for us today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned a little something about one of the less well-seen parts of the Star Wars galaxy. If you've made it this far, please like, subscribe, and share. It really helps the channel, guys, especially with YouTube pretty much shutting down longer videos. It would be very much appreciated. Thanks again. Take care of yourselves out there, everyone. Stay safe. And as always, may the Force break your chains. <laughs>